Hello my loves and a long awaited welcome back to my channel. Bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. I hope you're doing all kinds of well. I'm back. Hello, hello. I am so excited to be back to uh, making videos for booktube. I've missed this. I've missed y'all. So this is going to be a little chatty catch up of what I've been up to, why I left booktube, why I'm back and what you can expect going forward with this channel really. Although honestly it's probably going to be very similar to how things used to be. I'm just less depressed now, yay! So if you've been a subscriber for a while, if you've watched a lot of my old content then you'll know that I'm very open and honest about my mental health journey on this channel. I've always looked up to people who have been open, honest and vulnerable about their mental health struggles and you know, it helps break down the stigma. Everyone, everyone has something, right? Everyone's feeling it, especially after the pandemic. Times are hard and we all need to be kinder to ourselves, I think. So I'm pretty sure when I stopped posting, most of y'all probably understood that it was just a bad mental health spell. That lasted a lot longer than I expected it would. I knew I was gonna take a wee break, <laughs> a, a wee break from posting. Due to feeling burnt out and overwhelmed and my declining mental health um, at the beginning of the year, and I did post in my Discord channel that I was taking a break, that I would be back, that I didn't know when. I think I said soon, <laughs> and it's now. The end of August as I'm filming this. So I do owe y'all an apology for not being more, I guess, forthcoming and upfront about what was happening. I hope I didn't worry anybody too much. I have been popping up here and there in my friends' vlogs and reading sprints and live shows and things. But I haven't been very active on social media at all, just kind of popping in to post something on my story that I'm doing something fun and then I just go again. <laughs> but the break and using social media less was very much needed during this whole time period where I haven't been posting. I've basically been prioritising my mental health, which I always say I try to do, but I've never actually properly done until the beginning of this year. But that sadly did mean that I needed to do less and YouTube kind of fell by the wayside. I did always want to come back, of course. I mean, I did go back and forth about it a little bit when times were really rough mentally. I just figured this hustle culture isn't for me. I can't keep up. I get overwhelmed too easily. I can never have some kind of schedule due to my bad days, a lot of bad days at that, at that time. But in my heart, I knew that I would come back one day. I just didn't know when it was gonna be. And apparently that is now. So I am I'm very very sorry for keeping you all in the dark. I just didn't want to give any false promises or false hope. I did a couple of times I think post on my stories like should I come back to about you or that I was contemplating it um, but I haven't really had the balls to get on camera again properly until now. Even though I am doing a lot better and I have a lot less bad days than I used to do. I don't know if anyone can relate to this or I've been through something similar, but when I started to like be okay more than I wasn't okay, like the tables turned on me and I was, I had this like new lease of life, I still had that low key anxiety just waiting for the shoot, like the second shoe to drop and for me to be bad again. So I kept thinking, I wanna come back to BookTube, but I don't wanna do it yet. Cause like, what if, what if I get bad again and I can't commit and I only wanna come back if I can do this properly. But honestly, you can't live like that. You know, I'm gonna have my down periods still. I'm gonna have uh, bad days of anxiety, the occasional bout of depression, you know, that's just how it be. And I can't keep putting things on pause just in case. I can't commit to this properly because you know, life happens, shit happens, and we move, right? <laughs> Sorry for getting vulnerable on main, but yeah, that pretty much sums it all up. I'm doing a lot better. I can't promise that I'm gonna be back proper, like properly, consistently, not that I ever was. <laughs> My upload schedule is probably still gonna be very erratic and sporadic, but I'm so excited to be back. And I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone that's kind of stuck with me, anyone that sent uh, well wishes my way when they've seen me about <laughs> on other people's channels or just through DMs and things. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Honestly, it's, it's lovely. And I'm just, I'm just really excited to be back and to be interacting with you all again and talking books because my love of reading is back. It's been kind of sporadic over the last nine months as well. Oh, Tibbs has zoomies. So if you hear something charging in the background, that's just him. I did some exciting things over the summer, so I thought it'd be cool just to catch you up um, by showing you what I did vlog of those. Uh, first things first, let's talk about my trip to Oxford. I met Rebecca Kwan. I got an arc of Babel. I can't quite believe it. <laughs> still and it's been a few months. This was like back at the end of May. I was absolutely honoured, thrilled, 
blessed beside myself at the fact that I got invited by the lovely folk at Happy Voyager, so thank you so much to them. Um, to go to a dinner in celebration of Babel, I got to meet Arif Kwang, one of my favourite ever authors, and she's amazing. And she was so, so lovely, and with the best time in Oxford, I went along with uh, my lovely work colleagues and pals, Nicole and Lauren. I'll link their bookstagrams down below so you go check them out. It was so lovely to get the opportunity to go to Oxford as well, because I've never been, and it's such a beautiful city. We of course had to go to Waterstones and we also went to Botanic Gardens which were beautiful. Uh, we did get rained on pretty hard though. It rained. <laughs> but I did get to see the bench that's featured in the His Dad Materials TV show. Someone had carved like Lyra and Pan on it so that was kind of cool. And then we got wined and dined. It felt very very fancy. The food at the event was lovely. There were so many cool people there. Yes, that is Samantha Shannon. No, I didn't approach her and speak to her because I was intimidated. <laughs> and I'm a huge coward, but I'm sure she's lovely. She seemed to be lovely from afar. I got to meet so many lovely people there as well. And uh, we, of course, were given a an arc of Babel, which is one of my prized possessions now. And then afterwards, we actually went to the pub across the road and had a drink with Arif Kwang, which was like a big pinch me moment right there and then. And I very awkwardly asked her if it would be cool to get a picture with her and she signed my book and here's the picture. And it was just a very, very exciting and very cool thing to be a part of. And I still can't quite believe that I actually did that. Like, that's amazing. I got to meet one of my favorite authors. Like. What? Babel, of course, is also amazing. I won't go into a full review here. You've probably heard all about it from numerous people who have all read it by now. But what I will tell you is that, yes, it did inflict emotional damage in the best way, just like she does. My favorite books are always the ones that cause me pain, let's be real. And I love a book with footnotes. Right, I'll leave it there for, for Babel. Oh, I will say though, I'm pronouncing it Babel because in the book, students that are part of the Institute of Babel are nicknamed Babblers. So even though we say in the UK Babel, I'm, I'm just, I, I just need to call it Babel. I'm being pedantic, I know. <laughs> Next cool thing I did, which I intended on making into a reading vlog, but no reading was done. <laughs> but I went to Italy for my future brother-in-law's wedding. So my fiance, Massi, his brother, Vincenzo, got married to the lovely Julia in Italy, um, in Sestri Levante, which I've been to before, which is an absolute beautiful place. And it was a big family do, a proper fancy old Catholic church with a very enthusiastic priest. <laughs> Julia looked beautiful. The day was great. Again, lots of nice food, lots of drinks, uh, pretty much did no reading, just a lot of socializing uh, with Massey's extended family and friends and eating good food and being at the beach. I did try and read whilst I was there, but it was a fail, but I thought I'd include it in here anyway because it was another cool thing that I did. Oh, actually I did buy a book whilst I was in Italy, so I might as well just show you that. Can I read it? No. Is it absolutely stunning? Yes. <laughs> I've been saying that I need to learn Italian for years and years and years. I've been with Massey like how long? Like 12 years? Something like that. So I really do need to learn. He's not fluent, but he picks it up really quickly when he's back in Italy speaking with his family and stuff. And I know just some of the basics. So my line of thought when I saw this beauty was that maybe one day I'll actually do the damn thing and learn the language and then I can read one of my favorite books in Italian. However, this is the second book, I should say. This is um, Miss Bourne, book two, Well of Ascension. And guys, it has sprayed edges. <laughs> this is absolutely just stunning. But it was really the end papers that sold it for me. Like, look at the end. And then that's on the other side at the end. So this is going to be uselessly sat on my shelf. I don't know when I'm going to read it, but it's really pretty. And I thought it'd be quite fun to try and find the rest of the books in this edition in Italian the next time I'm in Italy. I probably could just buy them online, but I like the idea of uh, hunting them down in bookshops whilst I'm over there. And that was my justification. I'd also had a couple of strawberry daiquiris when I walked past the bookstore and saw this. So that came home with me. And then the next cool thing was of course, Yalk. Now y'all that are subscribed to my pals Becca, Gavin and Ashley have probably seen all the vlogs. You've seen me in the background of their vlogs. So I didn't feel a need to do a proper vlog of it because it would just be the exact same footage that they had. And I didn't actually update like 
properly whilst I was there. I just have a lot of B-roll. <laughs> so I figured I'd just include it here. And also, once again, no reading was done over that weekend, of course, but I met so many cool people. So many lovely and amazing um, content creators that I follow and have watched for ages. I got to meet them in person, which was so cool. I finally met Jade. I cannot believe I hadn't met Jade up until that point. Like, in person, in real life. <laughs> and also some lovely folk that had uh, watched my videos came and said hi as well, which was very surreal, but very cool. And thank you to everyone for being so bloody lovely. So it was myself, Becca, Ashley and Gavin that um, kind of all stayed together. Um, Gavin and I shared a room, which was a very fun experience. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would recommend sharing a bed with Gav. <laughs> the convention itself, Yalk, the actual, like, literary convention, not great. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be something that would hold our full attention for, like, the full three days that we were there. But the fact that Comic-Con was a part of it, oh, Comic-Con was great. The amount of cosplayers I kept um, taking photos and sending them to Massey whilst I was there. Shout out to this guy who even posed for me, but this guy is uh, the deep from uh, The Boys, which just made my whole damn life. Also ate very well whilst we were in London. We had lots of lovely food and a lot of good cocktails. Just a lot of great times with some great people. And of course, whilst I was there, I bought some shit. So quick haul from Yal. Okay, I think we'll do books first first and then random stuff. I didn't get too many books. I was quite restrained actually. I was quite proud of myself but I did get the Mina Lima edition of The Adventures of Pinocchio because I have I think all of the others now that have been released so far for these so this was a good price at one of the stands and I couldn't resist so I got this beauty. Oh and we went into Forbidden Planet. Oh oh my god that was a good shop. Also went to foils as well but first uh, Forbidden Planet. I found Sundial by Catriona Ward, which I don't fully know what it's about, but I loved The House at the End of Needless Street. I'm forgetting the title of it, but I loved that book. So when I saw this at a good price, I had to get it. I think it's about um, a man and his daughters. One of them starts acting weird, I think. The secrets and one of them might not leave the house alive. I don't know, I don't wanna know too much about it going in, but very excited to hopefully read this in the next couple months. Another, I think, creepy, speculative, fantastical one that I've had my own for a while is Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. Can I remember what it's about? No. <laughs> okay, we have a woman who has a perfect husband, perfect life, perfect home, but sometimes she wonders about things, strange things, dark things. Ooh, the locked basement she's never allowed to enter and whenever she asks the neighbours, they can't quite meet her gaze. Everything is perfect, isn't it? Sounds great, right? Heard some great things about it. It's a short one too, so I'm thinking just great to generally have for any readathons that come up in September, October. I am going to be doing Becca's Bookoplathon, of course. This could be a good choice for that. And then I blame Michaela for this because I didn't know that Cozy Mysteries featuring cats was like a thing. And then I can't remember what the title of the one that she bought was, but as soon as she showed it, I was like, okay, I need to get myself one of these. So I found Claws, well actually no, Ashley found for me, Claws for Concern by Miranda James, which is a Cat in the Stacks mystery novel. And I'll just read the first little bit. It says, Charlie Harris is busy enjoying his new grandson when a mysterious man with a connection to Charlie's family starts visiting the library, bringing with him troubling questions about an unsolved murder. So we've got murder. I also believe that this cat plays a role in like all of the books. I feel like maybe this probably wasn't the best one to start with, but I am legitimately so excited for this. <laughs> and again, one I hope to read soon. There were a few art stalls on like the other side of the venue that we found on like, I think the last day we were there and I couldn't resist. So firstly, I got this, I'll try not to show the glare too much, which is gorgeous and creepy and just a vibe and all of her stuff was really, really nice. Um, I'll put the artist's Instagram in the description if you'd like to check them out. Um, so that's one of them. And then from a different artist, again, I'll link their Instagram. I got, I got cats, because of course I did. <laughs> this one's giving me Bellatrix vibes and this one's giving me Tibbs vibes. So I was clearly missing my cats that day, but they are pretty freaking cool. And I, I need to figure out where I'm gonna put these on the wall, but absolutely love them. Um, they did a bunch of different cool um, prints and things, but again, I'll link their info down in the description. I also got a couple of the cakes in a jar from this cool stall as well, um, but they're gone, they didn't last long. <laughs> and in the Comic-Con bit, we were walking around and at one point I saw out of the corner of my eye a stall that was selling crystals and I turned to Ashley and I said not to alarm you but you need to follow me <laughs> and we all spent quite a lot of time there um but again I was quite 
proud of myself for only getting the one thing. I got this little dragon, but I couldn't resist that. And we, I think we all got one of these actually. And we each named them after a hob dragon. So meet Tintaglia. <laughs> and the last thing I got was some jewelry. So I got this moth necklace, which I'll try and zoom in. <laughs> there you go. It's cute, right? <laughs> Just take your time camera. And I got some earrings as well. I'll go grab them because they were cute and I thought quite unique. So I hope you can see that. It's just a little, little umbrella earrings. Super cute. And that was my Alk adventure. I also came back to a mystery parcel, which consisted of two books. So these must have been purchased off my wish list, but they didn't come with a note. So if you got me these, please let me know so I can thank you. First up, Smashed by Junji Ito, which is a story collection. I love Junji Ito. I'm kind of collecting the story collections at this point. Hopefully gonna read some in October. And then also in a similar spooky vein, Christina Henry's The Ghost Tree. I love Christina Henry and I'm, I feel like I have a few to read now though. This one in particular, I'm very excited about because I have heard particularly good reviews for this one. I believe it's about a monster in the woods, girls going missing, murders in the woods. Um, and I really like Christina Henry, as I mentioned, so, so excited and happy to have these. But I have no idea who to thank, so if you did order these off my wishlist for me, thank you so much, and please do let me know so I can reach out to you and thank you properly. And that's all the cool things that happened over the summer. There wasn't really anything exciting to update you from from the <laughs> beginning of the year. I was just in full goblin depression mode then, so nothing really exciting happened. I did take up a new hobby though, which was crocheting. I crocheted this blanket that's right here, <laughs> and no doubt I'll start doing that again as it starts to get colder because I really enjoy doing it whilst listening to audiobooks or podcasts or whatever. Oh and I also painted these shelves white so if you noticed they're now white. I've been meaning to do it for years and I finally did it. That's pretty much everything I have to update you on I think. So what can you expect from my channel going forward? It's going to be very similar to how it used to be I think. There's not really going to be an upload schedule. I'm just going to upload what I want when I want. It's probably still going to be a lot of reading vlogs because those are my favourite things to kind of create as well as my wheel of TBR. My wheel of TBR, I'm hoping will make a return if I can revive it, which is still to be seen because I have tried it since and I did get it to work and it didn't work and it's been a whole battle. So we shall see. But what I did want to say is going forward with the wheel of TBR, I'm not going to do it every month like I used to or used to aim to do because it doesn't leave me with much room to read out anything outside of that. And I do love a secret TBR and vlogs where, you know, I'll, I'll have an overarching theme or whatever. So I was thinking maybe bi-monthly to start with, taking inspiration from my friends who also have TBR games that have kind of like lessened it. So it's not every month. It makes a lot of sense. It does kind of wear you down after a while, I think. It's nice to do and I still love the challenge, but I'd like to maybe not do it every month going forward. I also am going to be putting a pause on the buddy reads when I do bring back the Wheel of TBR um, just because I feel like I never kept up with it all that well and I feel like others maybe struggle to keep up with it as well. There's so many readathons and book clubs happening all the time in the community and it is something I might do eventually down the line again but for the moment not yet is all I'll say. Uh, the Discord's still open of course. Uh, I'll still chat on there occasionally. I'm gonna get better as well hopefully. At being back on social media and being more active in general because I have really missed it I was just very much prioritizing my mental health and prioritizing things in my life besides like the bookish side of things which was very much needed and I'm glad I did but I have missed it. I've got some videos I want to get out there and I've been vlogging the um, my magical readathon experience this month. We also have Becca's Bookathon happening next month so the TBR for September is going to be going to be tricky because I'm going to have to do the wheel and book thon combined again, which is always chaos. So of course I'm excited for that. But yeah, all that to say, I'm back. I'm excited to be back. If there's anything in particular you want to see from me, do let me know. I'm not going to make any promises because I'm going to try my best not to overwhelm myself and not try to do all of the things, which goes against my nature. I'm also going to be try to be less of a, of a perfectionist because there's so many vlogs and videos that never made it online because uh, I just wasn't 100% happy with them. So I was doing all this stuff in the background that y'all never saw and I'm going to try and work on that and not try and be so much of a perfectionist and get more content out for y'all. But hopefully y'all will still like, um, this whole video has just been, been me calling myself out basically <laughs> on all of my neuroses, but excited to be back. I hope you're happy for me to be back. I hope you're excited to see more content from me. Thank you again for sticking around. I hope you've been having a great reading year. I hope you're doing all kinds of well. And I guess that's it from me. Uh, thank you so much again. I hope you enjoyed this little catch up and uh, I'll catch you in the next one, my dudes. Bye y'all.